All right, welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to take a look at a Chuck Berry early rock and roll lead style riff. So this lick is going to start out on the fifth fret of the third string, and we're going to bend that up. And we're not quite bending up a full step. Um, we're almost bending up a full step. And then when we almost get to a full step, we're going to hit this third fret second string. So. And then all we're going to do is roll our finger over and get the third fret first string. So. Okay, and one little tip I'll give you about bending strings is that when we're bending this note right here, that note that we're bending, what we can do to help us out and get more control over that bend is that I'm actually like pressing down and fingering these frets behind it. So my second finger is fretting the third string fourth fret, and my first finger is fretting the third string third fret. So, and I'm bending them together as a team. All three fingers are bending up. If we try and just bend with one finger, we can maybe do it, but we won't have much control over the bent note. Right? We want all three fingers to kind of be bending as a team together. So that lick is gonna be happening three times. One, two, three, and then after that third time, we're going to do this really cool walk down. So we're starting on the 6th fret 2nd string, and then we're moving to the 5th fret 2nd string, 3rd fret 2nd string, okay, so, and then our finger is going to jump to the 3rd fret 3rd string, and we're going to hammer on to the 4th fret third string. So, and then we're going to end lick off by playing fifth fret fourth string. So that lick played all together really slowly sounds like this. Okay, so over the first four bars of blues, where it's just hanging on our one chord G, we're gonna play that whole thing twice. So. For the next set of four bars, we're gonna be on C, or the four chord for two bars, and then back to G. So all we're going to do is slide that lick up. So now our first bend is happening on the 10th fret third string. And then our first finger is getting the 8th fret on the second string and the 8th fret on the first string. And it'll happen three times just like it did before. Two, three. And that walk down is going to happen the same. We're just going to be dealing with different frets now. So now it's going to be 11th fret, 2nd string, 10th fret, 2nd string, 8th fret, 2nd string. So, and now we're hammering on from the 8th fret on the 3rd string to the 9th fret on the 3rd string. So, and then we're going to end it off on the 10th fret, 4th string. So that lick played all the way through sounds like this. Okay, so that kind of fills up those two bars with the uh, C chord or the four chord. We're gonna jump back down and play that exact same first riff we did one more time. So, so far, we're going to play that first lick twice. Move up. And back down. Okay. 
Okay, this brings us to the last four bars of the blues, or the turnaround. And we're gonna play a completely different riff for that. We're gonna be up here, and I'm gonna be playing a double stop, which just means I'm playing two notes at the same time. I'm going to start out with my first finger on the 10th fret second string, and my second finger on the 11th fret third string. So I'm gonna play those two notes together five times. One, two, three, four, five. And then on the sixth time, I'm just gonna add my third finger to the 12th fret second string. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's over the D chord or the five chord. Next up, we're gonna move to the four chord. I'm gonna do the exact same move, but I'm just scooting it down two frets. So, now my first finger is on the 8th fret 2nd string, and my 2nd finger is on the 9th fret 3rd string. Same exact move. My 3rd finger on that very last time is being added to the 10th fret 2nd string. And then finally, we're going to scoot it down, so now my 1st finger is on the 6th fret 2nd string, and my second finger is on the seventh fret third string. Same exact thing. And my third finger is gonna end up on the eighth fret second string. Eighth fret second string. So that whole turnaround section sounds like this. So you might have noticed that I've kind of added some overdrive or distortion to the sound. This really helps when we're playing these kind of single note lines up on the top strings. Um, if we don't have any kind of overdrive or distortion, it's really hard to get sustain out of the instrument. And with parts like this, that's what we want. Um, otherwise, especially on guitars like this, like a Strat or a Tele, it'll sound really plinky right? We won't have any sustain, and it kind of has that plinky sound. Whereas with this, like when we bend, we get sustain, which is always like a comforting feeling when we're playing lead guitar parts. All right, so now that we've learned those parts, in the next lesson, we're going to get a chance to practice this. I'll see you over there.